The Taliban regime that ruled Afghanistan in the late 1990s imposed a harsh system of Sharia laws that oppressed women. Today the country is still governed by Islamic laws, but a number of Afghans say that a more progressive system of Sharia can be implemented based on an accurate interpretation of the Quran. Corpwatch and KPFA met with Najla Ayubi, a women's rights activist and lawyer who is a member of the Afghan Joint Election Management Body. She says that patriarchal traditions are to blame for much of the laws that were used to oppress women. Islam itself doesn't have any problem, uh, specifically according to women's rights, if they should interpret in the right way. If my brother kills someone in another family, to become in a peace, just they're giving them a woman. They're marrying them, they're using as a slave, or they're selling them. This is not the Islam. This is, this is tradition, or this is culture, unfortunately. The Imam of the Shara Now Mosque agrees with Ayubi. He says that many Islamic states mix patriarchal traditions with Quranic law. The Islam that we have in our country is only a copy and more influenced by traditions than actual scriptures. Because of this, the true meaning and essence of Islam has been lost or separated from most Muslims here. Fariba Nawa, author of Afghanistan Inc., says the Taliban fundamentalists have made this situation worse. It goes back to their own ideology, which they learned in the madrasas. Many of these uh, Taliban boys never even had contact with women because they were orphans. So they're afraid of women. And their, their reaction to fear is to banish them from sight. Ayatollah Mohseni, a former Mujahideen fighter, decided to try to change the old system by building a progressive Islamic university in Kabul's Katase neighborhood where Sharia law can be studied. His last Prophet Madrasa has been controversial as it was built with the help of money from Iran. The principal, Ayatollah Mohseni's younger brother, who is an agricultural expert, says that his new university intends to grow a new generation of students who will promote Islam as a peaceful and progressive force. You've heard of Confucius, the famous Chinese philosopher. Confucius wrote a proverb that says if you need something that lasts for one year, you have to plant rice. If you need something that lasts for ten years, plant a tree. And if you want something that lasts a century, educate a human being. The students at the Last Prophet Madrasa are mostly Shia and from the poor Hazara community. They live at the beautifully designed new campus where men and women study in mixed classrooms. Two students, Siddiqa and Tuba, say that the Quran and Islamic history do not ban women from education or the workplace. Islam is an open religion where men and women can study and work together, even in this society. Ayatollah Mosseini did a great service for Afghanistan, especially for women. From the past, even during the time of Perfect Muhammad, women were allowed to work in society. Even Muhammad's daughter was active in society. From the distant past to the current, women were able to participate in every aspect of society, both politically and socially. Mohammed Tahir from Wardak, another student in Mohseni's last Prophet Madrasa, says he hopes to rewrite Afghan Sharia law by becoming a lawyer. They don't have the knowledgeable people in, in the system of the court. Just they graduate from maybe from high school. They are not professional. Uh, if we graduate, inshallah, we will be the professional people. A new generation of educated lawyers who can interpret the Quran correctly may be Afghanistan's best hope to change the patriarchal laws that the Taliban use to oppress women. For Corp Watch and KPFA, I'm Protap Chatterjee with Ronald Nabu Sakamoto in Afghanistan.